What's the most excruciating pain that a human being can feel? Yesterday, I presented the case of a 50-year-old female who presented to my office with increasing pain in her face. It's been going on for a few months, but it's become more and more frequent. She has episodes of lightning bolt pain that comes along her jawline just on one side of her face, and it's intermittent. It's happening five to 10 times a day, and it comes out of absolutely nowhere. She could be brushing her teeth, she could be putting on makeup, or even just a cool breeze to her face will incite the pain. She has trigeminal neuralgia, or tic de la row, which is one of the most painful conditions known to mankind. There's another condition that's arguably just as painful, and I'll go through that in a case study next week. So is this kind of like a toothache? This is so much more intense than that, and let's talk about why. This is the anatomy of the fifth cranial nerve nerve and it's split up into three branches called the mandibular branch, the maxillary branch, and the ophthalmic branch. Each branch supplies different portions of the face and there's one on either side, one going to the right side and one going to the left side. So our patient has a trigeminal neuralgia of the mandibular zone or V3. That's actually how the trigeminal nerve got its name because of tri means three. Over 150,000 people per year are diagnosed with trigeminal neuralgia and it's most common in people over the age of 50 and twice as common in women as compared to men. Like most things in medicine, the cause is unknown, but we typically refer to them as primary or secondary trigeminal neuralgia. Primary is typically linked to a vascular compression on the nerve itself as it exits out the brainstem and it's typically caused from compression from the superior cerebellar artery. Basically means that the blood vessel is actually pulsating on the nerve itself. Other causes include tumors, multiple sclerosis, or something that causes the sheath of the nerve to demyelinate or to lose its coating, initiating the pain. So how do we diagnose it? We first start by ordering an MRI of the brain and that can be done with Fiesta sequences, which helps us look a little more closely at this area of the brain. On our patient's MRI, here you can see the fifth cranial nerve exiting from the brainstem in this little circle, which is actually the artery that's compressing the nerve. I just wanna say how cool this is to be able to see something so small on imaging, and this is literally just a few millimeters. We're literally talking about something, the diameter of the end of this pen crazy. It's very important to seek medical attention if you're having any type of facial pain because it could be trigeminal neuralgia or any of these other things listed here. Sometimes the MRI does not give us answers and the diagnosis must be made clinically. It's usually pain in one distribution of the nerve on one side of the face. It is a severe acute pain, the most intense pain known to man. It comes on all of a sudden and it goes away just as fast and these episodes can happen many times a day. It's also known as a suicide disease because of how painful it is. All right, the diagnosis has been made. Now what are the treatments? We usually start with non-surgical measures and typically we start with one of three different medicines. One is called carbazepam or Tegretol. Second is gabapentin or Neurontin. And the third one is called oxcarbazepine or trileptal. These are usually started at low doses and titrated as tolerated. In some instances, surgery may be considered. And here is a procedure called a microvascular decompression where we make a small incision behind the patient's ear and drill a small hole into the skull. Here we can identify the trigeminal nerve as it exits out the brainstem and then find the offending vessel and place a piece of Teflon between the vessel and the nerve to provide a barrier of relief from the pulsations of the artery. Another procedure is called a percutaneous rhizotomy, where a surgeon can place a probe into the cheek to access the base of the skull. This needle can then be heated up to damage the nerve in order to provide pain relief, but it does leave the patient with numbness in that side of the nerve. Another option is something called balloon compression, which is very similar. It's that we inflate a balloon near the nerve to damage it. Glycerol rhizotomy is another option where you actually inject glycerin into the nerve to do the same thing. Stereotactic radiosurgery is another option where we can provide radiation treatments through gamma knife, cyber knife, or Linac to lesion the nerve through radiation. All of those options that I mentioned after the microvascular decompression are all aimed at actually damaging the nerve. And since it's a sensory nerve, losing sensation to that side of the face is typically way more tolerated than the pain itself. 
Of course, there are pros and cons to every approach, and that's why you should talk to your surgeon about what may be the best option for you. There are even some neuromodulation options as well. Now back to our patient. After failing primary medical management, she went on to have the microvascular procedure and achieved complete pain relief after the surgery. She went home on postoperative day number two, and after two years, she has not had the pain recur. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week, and I'll go through another case.